<laughs> what is with everybody? First things first, shout out to Byron Donalds, okay? I just want to say that, okay? Uh, what is with... This is the look of a man who's lost. To, he went up against Byron Donalds and lost, okay? He got torched by Byron Donalds, and I, I absolutely love to see it. But what is with these leftists who go against our heavyweight champions on the right looking absolutely wrecked after an interview with them, okay? It's like they literally lost to a, a battle or a fight. It's like they lost a fight to the Avengers every time they go against one of our heavyweight champions on the right. And I'm talking about Vivek Ramaswamy, Byron Donalds, Donald Trump, okay? They, uh, uh, I'm going to throw Tulsi Gabbard out there. Um, who else? There, there's so many. There's so many. It's like every time somebody goes against somebody on the right, they always come out looking like, like they saw a ghost or something. Like, what is this face? This is hilarious. And, uh... <laughs> Byron Donalds, man, I tell you, he he just absolutely just does his thing every time. So shout out to him. We're not going to watch this clip. Well, this one, we're going to be watching this one right here where he goes against, well, absolutely obliterates Kate Baldwin. So, yeah. All right, we're going to get right into this, and I will be giving my commentary periodically throughout the video, more so on the back end, so stay tuned for that. And welcome to the King Squad. This is the best reaction channel on YouTube. If nobody told you today, I hope you're having a great day at whatever time you're watching this video. And I hope everybody's drinking their water and making their money legally. And no, this is not financial advice, okay? Be sure to get some fresh air, man, okay? They want us to be drained and, and down and oppressed and all this other nonsense by this jacked-up economy. But, uh... You know, we woke up this morning, so there's positives out here, okay? You woke up this morning, and it's another day to be great. So let's get right into this video. Shout out to Byron Donalds for doing his thing and wrecking Communist Network news. And below 3% since March of 2021, a trend that you could say could be good for the Harris campaign, maybe fueling the Fed to begin to cut interest rates in the fall. What's your reaction to it? My reaction to it is, is that Kamala Harris's administration with Joe Biden crippled families across our entire country. There was a video of a, of a black woman being interviewed, I think, by MSNBC, yep. talking about how prices have gone up massively. A bell pepper that was $2 is now $5. And she was able to get through it. But what about a single mom with two kids, three kids, doing everything to make ends meet? Well, the reason why those prices have been massively expensive is because Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote on Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan in 2021. She was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act. All that did was create massive government spending, which created massive inflation on the backs of the American people. Overall, prices are up well over 20%, especially when you start getting into food and other areas like that. So Kamala Harris's record has been one of leaving working families behind. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a massive inflation. Our economy was growing massively at the same time. Working families were getting ahead. Middle income families getting ahead. Everybody was thriving. I think so the key issue is what was just brought up about which candidate is the candidate of political and economic change. It's without question that candidate's Donald J. Trump because Kamala Harris was sitting there shotgun with Joe Biden, creating one of the worst economic situations for working families in the last 40 years in the United States of America. The idea of change though is all- Complete facts. And she's she's brought uh, a tampon Tim, okay, rocking over here in a corner who likes to play with kids, okay, and not in the, the, the uh, good way. All right, she's she's brought him around and she's here to finish the job. All right, uh, how people don't see this is absolutely mind boggling to me. And at some point in time, you really have to sit there and say, you know, some people just must hate the country they live in. So that's that, you know, it, it's, it's she's here to finish the job. So God forbid she gets in. You already know what her plans are. States of America. The idea of change, though, is all about perception. Right. I mean, it could be changed from now or changed from Trump or changed from, you know, left to right and where I was just yesterday. So change is a percept is, is a perception that is up is, that is in the eye of the voter. And what Harry Enten was getting at on the issue of 
age is that in the analysis you can see that it's flipped for Donald Trump, that now more voters are seeing him as too old to be president compared to what voters thought back in May. This was a Democratic problem. Is this now a Republican problem? No. <laughs> well, first of all, um, with the polling that you're talking about, I'm not totally surprised because if you look at Kamala Harris over the last 24 days, what have we seen? She won't answer questions. She won't talk to your that network or any other question, network. She has no specific question. policy. No, no, but this does matter. It does matter, and let me explain. If she won't answer questions, hard-hitting questions about her record and what she's going to do, not the fluff about joy and moving forward and freedom. We're talking about the real political and policy issues that are going to affect the American people. She's nowhere to be seen. She will not answer questions. She has not talked to the American people on but her you own think, website. You think if, there are you no think policies. When, no, but when you think, so you it's think easy when she to run as if you're a Hollywood are, starlet, but we're running for president. But you think when, when she is, sits for interviews, lays out policy, you think that's going to lead with more people thinking she is too old to be president? I'm trying to follow the line here. No, it's not about her age. It's about her ability and her competency to lead our country going forward. What's going to be her economic agenda? Is that going to be different from Joe Biden? I don't think so, because Susan Rice is on the record now saying that Kamala Harris was integral in the Joe Biden Kamala Harris agenda. I just laid out for you that she voted and she broke the ties in the Senate to push Joe Biden's economic agenda. So she has to answer for that. What is she going to say? Oh, I just want to move forward. And let's go back to another one. When she ran for president in 2020, when she was in the United States Senate, she supported the massive Green New Deal. She supported Medicare for All, a co-sponsor. She ran on that in 2020. Now she's trying to throw out staffers to run away from that. So what I am saying is not about age, about being a, ch a candidate for political and economic change to help our country thrive. Whether you're black or white, rich or poor, middle income, it doesn't matter. That person's Donald J. Trump. It is not Kamala Harris. And that my, is my point Kamala was Harris I was asking about age, questions. which is why I was which why I was. And you, you've brought up her not answering questions. You've also called her not competent and and. Uh, on that, Nikki Haley has some advice for, well, her advice was for Donald Trump, but I guess it would apply to all Republicans, including yourself, her speaking on Fox and how you guys talk about Kamala Harris. Let me play this from Nikki Haley. Quit whining about her. The campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not. You can't win on those things. The American people are smart. Treat them like they're smart. And she also said it's not going to win talking about how she's not answering questions. Do you agree? Well, look, I, like I said in this entire interview, I've not talked about Kamala Harris's crowd sizes or anything like that. You talk, I am you, you talking said about that, her competency to lead said, this yeah, country. Congressman, you said her Hold competency, on, and you said that she's not doing interviews, and those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said. Competency is... One second. This was wow, so rude. So rude. Uh, you know, it's almost like these people have no integrity at all. Integrity? What's that? And, uh, yeah, and then on the topic of trying to uh, disqualify Trump by age. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, last time I checked, Biden was older than Trump. Okay, last time I checked, and he's on the left. So, says a lot about you guys, really. And it's it, they can't get him where they want to get him. They can't pin him down, so they have to sit here and try to hit him in each and every direction. And we've been saying this, okay? Now they want to throw up, uh, I think he's too he's too old to run. Really? Really? Nah. I'll take seasoned Trump, former President Trump, any day over the week over cackling Kamala Harris, who's let this uh, this country sink with the Titanic. Thank you. But th th those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said you guys should not be talking about because it's not going to win you voters. What do you say to Nikki Haley? Well, first of all, what I'm talking about is about her competency to lead our country. And competency is based upon decision making and policies that you support. That's what it's always based upon. And if you look at her record in the U.S. Senate, if you look at the fact that she was there as a partner with Joe Biden, leading to one of the great 
economic collapses for working families in our country. Because when you have massive weight, massive um, 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 inflation, when wages are down, adjusted for inflation, when people are having to make uh, decisions between the light bill and food or housing and other things, that's a catastrophe for working families. It's devastating to middle income Americans. Kamala Harris, that is her record. And so all I'm saying is, is that, yes, she has to answer for her record if she's going to choose to answer any questions at all. Right now, she's choosing not to answer questions. It is being done on purpose because when you examine her record, it demonstrates that her record would lead us to truly believe that she doesn't have the competency to lead the United States of America going forward. We That's know that Donald Trump has the competency to do so because he's already done it. I, I take that as you disagree with Nikki Haley on her take on strategy here. I want to play for you what Donald Trump said in his conversation. Some wow. Shout out to Byron Donalds for absolutely just annihilating her and, and shutting her down. OK, and they absolutely hate it. You know, absolutely. They absolutely hate it. One part of what Donald Trump said in his conversation with Elon Musk about firing striking employees. So, yeah, you know. There we have it. Shout out to Byron Donalds for being on his P's and Q's and remaining stoic. I absolutely love to see it. Remaining cool, calm, and collected while absolutely blowing this interviewer out of the water with logic and common sense. Love to see it. And um, and just bringing rationale to the table, okay? They want to sit here and, and tie you up in your with your own words and tie you up with these uh, uh, questions and try to attack, attack his integrity and attack his logic and reason and all this other nonsense. But in reality, the truth is the truth, okay? The country is on fire. And not like it caught the Holy Ghost, okay? Not like that, okay? The country is literally like, yes, it's, it's literally in Transformers 4, okay? It's literally just kaboom. And that's from the Biden administration and the... Uh, Harris and Waltz administration is the Grim Reaper coming to collect. They're coming to finish the job. That that's what they're coming to do. All right. So that I mean that's how it strikes me at least. You guys comment down below what you guys think. Okay. I don't think the Harris and Waltz administration is coming with these peace plans and plans for prosperity. Okay. They're coming to finish the job. We got this immigrant crisis that is tearing people's lives up. We're over here supporting these wars. Okay. We. I personally believe that we need to be focused on ourselves. You can't before you can't go and help everybody in the world and then you can't even help you know keep yourself afloat. All right. That's that's kind of how I see it. We can't support everybody else. And we can't even support ourselves. All right. And then on top of that, we're over here creating new enemies and, and making allies and all this other stuff. And it's just I just don't think we're in a position to be doing all this. I think we need to be focused on ourselves. So that there's a, it, it, it's a lot deeper, but I, I have to, you know, really just be conscious of what I'm saying on the platform because the platform is, you know, interesting and i say it like that for many reasons but uh yeah kamala does not have these plans to you know bring us to a better position she has plans to finish the job carry out the democratic agenda uh come in replace us bring in uh, continue to usher in immigrants give them all these cars and food and, and and formula for their kids and housing and stuff like that meanwhile who's paying for that stuff and then on top of that, giving people $25,000 down payments for houses and uh, uh, giving loans of up to $150,000 and all this kind of stuff uh, uh, for mortgages. But I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where is this money coming from? OK, where is this money coming from? And people are already struggling. It doesn't make sense. And then if you go out and just bring if you just wish upon a star for this money and then you just pull this money out of the thin air, really everybody else's pockets. OK, you pull this money and then you give it to these other people who can't really afford the house. I mean, that's a foreclosure waiting to happen. I mean, that's how it strikes me. Like if they can't afford the down payment, how are they going to be able to afford the house? Last time I checked, it's like a ship that has to remain afloat, you know, and that's and that's just what it is. Like the, it's, with everything, I, I like to look at it as the cost of maintenance. You know what? I'm I'm not buying just the house. I'm buying into the maintenance of the house. That's kind of how it strikes me. But you guys comment down below what you guys think about Kamala Harris and her policies. And do you think that her policies are here to, you know, put America in a better position? I think she's coming to literally sink us. OK, <laughs> and that's 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 that.
when I see Kamala, I think of Megatron, and that's just that. Um, <laughs> and he he never had any good guy plans. So there's that. Anyways, I hope everybody's having a great and blessed and prosperous day, okay? And uh, yeah, just remember you woke up this morning, and if nobody told you today, you're an awesome person. I'm glad everybody's breathing and, and living and able to see this video and all that beautiful stuff. And uh, yeah, make sure you drink your water, take a walk, do something that is positive, all that beautiful stuff. And uh, I hope everybody's making their money legally. No, this is not financial advice, nor legal advice, and all that great stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.